All right. Uh, welcome, everyone. Surprisingly, we're going to talk about eBPF today. Uh, it's specifically, we want to mention how we actually build a program that uh, uses Rust in the kernel space and go in the uh, user space. So let's first uh, start with introductions. Yeah, so hi, I'm Dave. Uh, I work at Red Hat as a software engineer. My background is in software-defined networking uh, and most recently eBPF and uh, a lot of Rust. You know, it's quite often that you can forget to update little bits of your code and then spend hours debugging something which was really trivial, which was, oh, actually, I'm sending the wrong thing on the, the perf. And it'll nag at me and tell me, Dave, you're not allowed to do that. Um, and that's a lot of what IA is able to offer for you if you choose to use that in the kernel space. All right. Uh, let's also talk about uh, uh, like how actually Go helps. Uh, with the, okay, we, we actually heard a lot of nice things about Rust, but like how actually Go comes in the equation. First of all, writing Go applications are like super easy, so you can actually uh, iterate faster, and you also have like ability to produce static binaries, and we will see in a minute that you can actually embed the uh, eBPF programs in the binaries, binaries themselves as well. But uh, for me, I guess uh, the like uh, most important f uh, part, like uh, a pro for Go community, is like there's a lot of uh, development going on around C and CF, and we have a lot of packages that we can just utilize. In our case, it's gone again. Uh, we have uh, we are like uh, talking to the uh, container runtimes. We are talking to the Kubernetes API, and for all those uh, work, we can actually find some SDKs uh, to just like embed in our user space code and uh, discover the C groups uh, rather easily, and then attach our profiler programs. <laughs> I will keep doing this. Yeah, yeah. All right. Can you progress on? Uh, I forget what we're going to talk about here now. Ah, right, yeah, how it actually works. Yeah, now that's a question. Uh, so the way that we're actually able to write our Rust programs or Rust BPF programs is all really thanks to LLVM and the work of Alessandro Decina, who is my co-conspirator on Aya. Uh, he was the one that actually added support for uh, BPF as a target in Rust C. So Rust knows how to compile down to BPF bytecode, which is amazing. Um, and we are just you know, building on top of that using Rust. So we were able to use Rust macro system to make things really easy from a developer standpoint. You just annotate your code and say, hey, this is an XDP program, and it will keep you on the right path to uh, writing that. Um, OK, in this section, uh, I'm going to talk about libpf Go. Uh, which we, which is the library that we use in the user space. Uh, thanks to Aya being like super nice and compatible with the libbpf ABI, we can just like use the libbpf Go loader in user space and like just run the programs. And we can actually, there are certain advantages to this. We can just statically link the libbpf and like we we just have Core e support. Uh, and for our user space program as well. And if we want to change any implementation, it's kind of in Parka, in, uh, in my company, we are like true believers of open standards and libbpf kind of an open standard for us. So keeping in that uh, in place, like have uh, gives us the flexibility to, to just jump between, for example, we just rewrite our whole our like libbpf programs in Rust and it just worked. So, yes, uh, I'm just like skipping forward. Sorry for the agony. So in, the, in our example, I was going to just like demonstrate like what we do actually with this program, which in the user space, we just like discover the C groups and then we just like attach uh, to the, the low BPF programs to those C groups and we collect data and aggregate them into the eBPF maps and in the user space we just like convert them into the PPRO format which is another open source uh, format and we send them over to the storage layer. So the program is actually rather a simple one uh, because most of the APIs are just provided uh, with eBPF and uh, libBPF. We just 
uh, get the stack IDs and the stack traces from the kernel, and then we have a map uh, that actually counts the unique stacks and those aggregated values then sent to the user space. So I will just like try to walk through if this continues to work uh, on the Rust program. So Rust programs are, uh, for the eBPF, they are rather simple. So they don't have any uh, standard library or they, they don't have an entry point uh, like a main program, right? So your, your program is starts with like importing a couple of li uh, libraries from a Rust create uh, that IO provides, uh, which, are, which is specifically for the kernel space. If you are using an old kernel, you need to actually put a license section in there. Otherwise, like compiler will just rant about it. But it's not the case anymore, I guess, if you are using something uh, recent 5.2 plus, I guess. Yeah, and, and to be fair, this is not indicative of the nice sort of API that we like to provide you in Aya. It is a hack to work around old kernels. So don't read into this one too much. And then, like, we just create a eBPF map to actually count the stack traces. And this is a, a struct representation of a key that we put in a hash map. And that, in that hash map, like, the important part, I guess, in this section of the program is like having a, a map macro that where you can actually define the eBPF, map, uh, eBPF maps. And having this key, it needs to be represented as a C struct uh, since we are just like also sending this uh, thing to the user space and uh, we need to be sh like sure that there is there's nothing uh, rather than the data itself like padding or whatnot yeah and and type safety look so here is our map and it's a hash map of stack count keys to u64s so you know we we can't make any mistakes with that right exactly yeah so what else like this is how you actually attach to an event in this case, it's a perf event. And this is another feature for Rust. We can use actually results for that. This is a rather like common pattern in IO programs. Uh, we have, a, have an event handler, but that event handler actually calling a helper function, which returns a result. And we can just like uh, in a high level handle all the uh, events, basically, rather successful or failure. Yeah, so that, that's important because there's a lot of fallible operations that can happen inside an eBPF program, but we can't panic inside eBPF because we're, we're not allowed to. It's, it's not a permitted instruction. So this actually gives us a, a relatively nice way to handle errors. Um, and we also have a logging library as well, which is kind of like BPF trace print K on steroids. Uh, so you can actually leave it there in production as well for your logging. Um, and that, that will help you know, try and debug some of these errors if and when they do occur. And this is the actual program. We actually update the uh, maps by like, also getting the stacks, uh, stacks from the kernel itself. And then we just count them and uh, update the maps. I will start being a little fast here. I don't want to take so much of your time, which we already had. So you can also panic in the eBPF program. So you need to add a line like that uh, to actually handle the panics. Yeah, th uh, this, this is literally just making the Rust compiler happy that you actually can't panic. Uh, so that we, we just have to have it there. Otherwise, Rust gets upset. Exactly. So this is actually how you build. Uh, we still need to uh, have a nightly tool set uh, for, uh, to make BPF linker. And there's also already a task in there for you to just generate that program. And let's quickly check out the Go program that we have. Like after you compiled uh, that uh, eBPF program, Go has a, fa a facility to just embed them into the binaries. You just say that, OK, this is where that object file actually stays, and just like embed that to the library. Uh, we actually uh, mentioned that in the Rust uh, as well, like we need to match the keys uh, so that we can read them in the user space as well. Uh, in this case, like kind of the memory layout is the same uh, with the C program and the Go program, and we can just like uh, deserialize it in the user space. This is how actually you use libbpf go to load that module and the load uh, the object. Uh, and then uh, this is actually how you uh, start listening to perf events. 
and then you bring everything together um, and you attach your program to that uh, specific perp event and the data starts flowing. This is, uh, you need to just like uh, keep a, a reference to the maps that you have uh, and you, this, you can just like get that maps using the libbpf go and then there, there's another like uh, kind of nice API that lib, uh, libbpf exposes. You can read them in batch. Uh, you can do your magic in your user space. This is just a snippet to how to build it. Uh, libbpf go user program. Uh, slides are available. You can check it. Uh, the whole program is uh, in a single PR. You can actually see the difference how we get from the uh, C program to a Rust program, uh, even with the, how we actually updated our build tools, whatnot, like GitHub actions. Uh, just check this PR out uh, if you want to go down that path. Cool. Uh, so what is next? Uh, the whole idea behind this, we are planning to write rather complicated profilers. Uh, that runs on the uh, Linux kernel uh, to just support, for example, dynamic languages or the VMs like uh, Java. That's why we just like pick, uh, go down this path. Uh, at this point, we didn't have a lot of C, pro uh, C programs uh, written for BP BPPF, so that also helped us. Um, like we are planning to add them in Parka soon. For the Aya bits, do you want to yeah, lots of work to do in Aya. Um, Plenty of program types still not implemented. It's an easy thing to do. We're just looking for uh, users. So if you're interested, come and grab me later, and uh, I'll be happy to point you in the right direction. And like most importantly, we really want to pitch our both of our projects. We need help. Uh, we need contributors. If you're interested, just like go and find us. Uh, we have links everywhere. You can. Uh, Park has a Discord channel. I has a Discord channel. We are rather active. You can just like come and ask for help, and we can uh, actually help you to get into the eBPF land as well. So thank you for listening, and thank you for bearing the agony with us. <laughs> it was rather such a mess. Sorry for that. And these are the links. Yeah, hit them. Also, a uh, quick shout out to LibBPF and Aqua Security. They really helped us as well. Yeah, they are also looking for contributors. So yeah, please. Thanks. All right, yes, well done for dealing with all those technical issues. Uh, I see one question already. We'll just take a few questions. So first of all, thank you for your patience in dealing with all the issues. We really appreciated the talk. Um, when, deal when writing eBPF in Rust, you have to make a lot of unsafe calls. Uh, when you call unsafe, you turn off a lot of the compiler protections, bar checking, et cetera. Um, what are some ideas or plans that you have to move away from that so you can actually gain the full power of the Rust compiler? That's a really good question. Um, so a lot of it we're trying to abstract away inside the library itself. So you as a user don't have to do the unsafe work. We will do that for you. So like you just call hash map insert and like all of the unsafe stuff happens in the background. We can't get away from it because ultimately it's foreign function interface and changing stuff into raw pointers to pass into a CE program is inherently unsafe and working with raw pointers is unsafe. So yeah, the real way is just abstract that away from users. Um, I think that's the plan. More questions? Anyone? Yes, I see another one. So first, thank you for the great presentation. Enjoyed it. The question is, what is the performance overhead of Rust against writing in C? In the kernel, of course. Uh, none. Uh, not that I've observed anyway. I mean, ultimately, it compiles down to uh, BPF instructions. And the uh, program that you would write in C is basically the same as Rust. There's a uh, around some of the LLVM stuff, like memset and memcopy, which we're just working through. But uh, for the most part, um, they're, they're identical performance-wise. All right. One more question, if there is one. If there is one. Am I missing anybody? All right. So let's give one more giant round of applause for all those technical difficulties. It